Good afternoon and welcome back to the October 18th, 2022 public hearing of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Um, this meeting is being held via Zoom and live streamed on our YouTube channel. If you're interested in watching the proceedings, you may do so on the YouTube channel. And if you're interested in testifying, you may join the Zoom meeting at the estimated time shown on our agenda, which can be found on our website. We are now uh, going to resume the afternoon session with public hearing item number six, and I will turn it over to Corey Harala, our Director of Preservation, to take us through the remaining items on the agenda. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Uh, starting with public hearing item number six, this is LPC, LPC 22-09308, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the Borough of Manhattan, Block 618, Lot 18, 234 West 10th Street in the Greenwich Village Historic District. A Greek Revival style row house built in 1848. And the application is to construct a rear yard addition and create new window openings. Okay, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Ben, you now have control of the presentation. You just need to click on your screen. Thank you. And then you can advance the slides using your arrow keys. Perfect. Please state your name for the record and you may begin. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Benjamin Bischoff. I'm the applicant for the proposed project at 234 West 10th Street. Um, the project involves the renovation and expansion of an existing single family townhouse originally constructed in the Greek Revival style in 1848 and significantly modified by a previous owner in 1999 with a horizontal vertical enlargement. Uh, in the rear as seen in the second photo from site line B on this first page of presentation of the historic photographs and, and street view facade. So the, the um, photo second from the right hand side shows the 1999 extension, which we will be modifying um, via the addition of a second story, partial third story and roof deck. This work is not visible from a public thoroughfare as will be documented in our subsequent drawings. Staff level approvals have been granted for the replacement of HVAC equipment in the existing non-visible location on the roof. The replacement and reconstruction of the existing stoop to match the historic conditions and the addition of one window on the east facade of the 1848 building, which is visible from West 10th Street as it is located above the existing and historic alleyway, which leads to the rear yard. On the second page here, we have some additional photos of the existing second floor terrace looking towards the existing rear facade to show the conditions of the 99 extension and the remaining visible portions of the original 1848 facade. On page three, we have our block plan, which shows a series of sandbore maps and atlases dating back to 1855. Here we can see that this um, particular city block has always had a collection of varied building footprints and massings, uh, which also includes the historic stable in the rear yard here at 234 and several full depth buildings throughout the block. That continues to the present day where um, additionally, a number of six, seven, and eight story apartment buildings have been built, all of which we hope displays that this block has historically had a rather uh, undefined interior donut, a condition which was not adversely impacted by the 1999 extension, nor our proposed vertical enlargement of that extension. Uh, for the proposal, we're going to start with um, an elevation drawing and the um, renderings on the left um, uh, because the project is most clearly um, understood in three-dimensional massing. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, at the lower left corner, you see a rendering of the current condition um, and with the proposal to extend uh, at the second uh, floor with a, a roof terrace above. Um, the enlargement is intended to be constructed of materials matching the 1999 work already completed. In the existing and proposed elevations on the right, we are documenting that this enlargement is not visible from West 10th Street, whereas the one window that we are adding to the third floor of the original building will be visible from the street like the windows that currently exist on the second and third floor. Um, Uh, 
In these rear elevation drawings, we provide more detailed documentation of the proposed enlargement from both the east and rear uh, elevations. We extensively researched the 1999 project in order to match the mix of light and medium belt and brick used on the facade, the bluestone spandrel panels in the window system, and the black forest green paint color of the existing windows. Only the roof deck pergola to be constructed out of clear finished teak is a new material addition to the building. This next page of sections, um, both latitude and longitude, show um, the changes between the uh, 1999 massing and the proposed uh, work um, that we are seeking approval for today. On the right-hand side, you'll see um, the, uh, the cross-section, and on the left-hand side, the longer latitudinal section, I'm showing the difference between uh, what was approved originally, uh, constructed originally in 1999, and what our current proposal is. Um, we have also provided floor plans, uh, showing that there is uh, no work at the first floor. Um, the uh, vertical enlargement on the existing roof terrace at the second floor to be a bedroom and bathroom. Uh, the new roof deck then, which would be at the third floor level, an addition of an expanded bathroom. Um, and then the uh, view of the terrace at the roof. Uh, this page um, provides additional detail for the new uh, window proposed for the east elevation of the third floor, which was recently approved at staff level after the presentation was finalized. along with our reconstruction of the historic stoop at the street facade, which was also approved at staff level after this presentation was finalized. Um, and uh, that concludes the presentation. Um, this is a, uh, another view, a repeat of the third page, which um, most clearly displays the existing and proposed work um, in the renderings on the left-hand side. Um, we did uh, provide some additional documentation of rear yard conditions um, at the neighboring buildings for your consideration uh, at the request of, of our preservation staff, if, if need be, but I will uh, leave the, the presentation for your comment um, with this page. Okay, thank you. And maybe just on this page, you have a, a large apartment building on one side of you, and then you have something with a, what's on the other side of you. I, I could see in the uh, in the site plan, the block sure. plan, that there's something deeper there. You there can explain it. Yeah. There's another um, townhouse that we believe is a single family townhouse that has both a front and a back building. If I go to the ad additional uh, photos, you can see here, there's unfortunately a lot of vegetation, but this is a view from our uh, historic alleyway, capturing just a little bit of the front building. Then there's a CMU wall on that property and a larger building in the back that exists. I see. Um, okay. I can flip back. Uh, you can see that also we have a small block plan here. That's the um, magenta buildings on the right. Our um, lot is here in the middle with uh, our proposed work shaded there in lighter red. Okay. And the, so you're doing that extension next to the full height L to, for the expanded bathroom, but you're keeping the remainder of the rear, top floor of the rear facade intact. Correct. correct. We're not disturbing the, the cornice line. Or that, that last window. Correct. Uh, that last window becomes a, a, a door to the new rear terrace. Okay. So the addition's really on the additions. The addition is on the addition, correct. Okay. All right, uh, commissioners, do we have any other questions? Okay, let's see if we have public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And I will turn it over to Sonia Gior, our Director of Intergovernmental and Community Affairs to take us through the testimony. Thank you. So we do not have any signups in advance for this item. I'm checking to see if we have any hands raised and I'm not seeing any. So I will note for the record that Manhattan Community Board 2 recommends approval. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so commissioners, if we don't have any final questions, I think we can move to our discussion. So I'm sending you all requests 
to unmute yourselves. All right, and uh, Commissioner Gustafson, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. And Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. Um, and as has been presented, this is um, to uh, do to construct additions on previously approved uh, additions that were constructed in 1999, um, but they will be retaining the top portion of the rear facade to the where the one window is, which will be converted into a door to lead out to the next to the next the second floor of the addition. Um, so, Commissioner, and again, this is not visible from a public way and adjacent to a large apartment building and then a townhouse and a back house. So it also has limited connection to the central green space. Commissioner Chapin, would you like to start this one? Yeah, uh, sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, this is fine. It's, uh, you know, the visibility is not really an issue. It's... Uh, it's fairly, uh, you know, modest in scale, and it's uh, made very compatible to the existing addition. Uh, instead of, you know, could have been a situation where they started started de novo and 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 did it all from the beginning. But I think, I think this uh, this is fine as far as I'm concerned. I can approve it. All right, thank you, Commissioner Devonshire. Yeah, it's just a. a in addition to the previous condition, which was deemed appropriate, I think it's fine. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. You. Commissioner Chen. Yeah, it's consistent with the previous approval and is modest and is not visible from the public for All right, Commissioner Bland. I'm searching for more ways by which it's appropriate, <laughs> but I think that mostly been said. Um, certainly doesn't extend further into the rear yard either. So all appropriate. All right, thank you. Commissioner Lutfi? It's appropriate. And Commissioner Gustafson? I, I want to uh, uh, coin this uh, applicant's phrase, um, undefined donut condition. Uh, I think that's, that we're going to have to use that frequently in the future. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is appropriate. OK. Commissioner Shamir Barron? I agree. This is appropriate. OK, great. So I think we have a consensus. Commissioner Chapin, would you make a motion? Sure, thank you. Thank you. In the matter of a certificate of appropriateness for Old Manhattan, LPC 2209308-234 West 10th Street, Greenwich Village Historic District. A Greek Revival style row house built in 1848. Application is to construct a rear yard addition and create new window openings. I note that the building style, scale materials and details are the features that contribute to the architectural and historic character of the Greenwich Village Historic District. I recommend approval, finding that the work will not eliminate or damage any significant architectural features or be visible from public thoroughfares, that the proposed addition will not overwhelm the neighboring houses or detract from a unified row, given its context, which includes a neighboring taller row house with full height rear L and back building and an adjacent large apartment building that the removal of the limited remaining portion of the original rear facade will not eliminate a meaningful expression of the historic massing of the house, that the reconstructed top floor will feature a typical solid to void ratio and punched openings and will only project slightly beyond the facade's original plane, that the design materials and finishes of the proposed addition will be compatible with the existing additions at the rear of the house thereby helping to maintain a cohesive design. But the proposed addition will feature a predominance of masonry and horizontal divisions at floor levels, thereby helping to maintain a level of solidity and scale, which is compatible with the house and neighboring properties. And that the construction of the proposed addition on top of an existing addition will not reduce the block central green space. Thank you. And Commissioner Devonshire, would you second that motion? Second. All right, Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. 
Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed, the motion passes. That's approved, thank you. And we'll move to the next item. Thank you. Next item is public hearing item number seven, LPC 22-12079. An application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 488, lot 25. 392 to 394 West Broadway in the Soho Castle Historic District Extension. This is an Italianate style store and lofts building designed by John H. Whitenack and built in 1872 to 73. The application is to legalize painting the ground floor facade without LPC permits. Hey, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Karen, could you unmute yourself and I will give you control of the presentation. If you'll just click on your screen, um, you can advance the slides using your arrow keys or your mouse. Uh, please state your name for the record and you may begin. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Karen olson Kuler. I am a uh, creative principal at Hamburg Olson Design, and we are architects and designers, and our client was Seven for All Mankind at this location, which is at 392-394 West Broadway. Uh, we applied for a permit to paint uh, this facade uh, with the LPC in ju early June, and uh, this was the partly the presentation that we created. Uh, basically, we would like to uh, paint the first the first story of the facade. Um, we were inspired by some other, re other retailers or other cast iron structures uh, within the designated area uh, that have done so as well. Um, we chose, oops, sorry. Um, uh, here's the existing, um, the existing photo of uh, uh, back in June, I guess, and then the historic uh, tax photo of the um, uh, of the building. Uh, we tried to work with the colors as instructed uh, for the uh, warm neutral tones, uh, muted shaded grays, and such. Um, the uh, this is the existing. And this is the existing close-ups of the, um, the platform as well as the first story. And um, this is as of September 2nd, it was refurbished. Unfortunately, there was some miscommunication from the painting contractor who we had, most of the scope was within the interior of the project, um, basically uh, painting and refurbishing. And um, uh, fortunately, he, the painting contractor went ahead and painted without having a permit in hand. Um, and so we, ha we now have, I guess, an application uh, to legalize uh, this scope of work. Um, and so here you see the existing, or as it stands now, um, uh, when it was done in September. And um, here's the, uh, what was existing before. And we did go, obviously, um, to a Kendall charcoal color in Benjamin Moore. Uh, we revived the gold highlights that had already been there and part of the designated historic photos, uh, with the exception of the lights. The lights were not on the historic landmark um, uh, building, the gooseneck lights. Um, the stems are the same color, but the, uh, the goosenecks, uh, the actual shell of the light pendant is, a, um, is now the gold. Um, uh, as far as other, this is the actual photos or some more details of, of the facade. Um, it was in quite disrepair and um, with graffiti and such. And so obviously it's, it's taken quite the improvement. The, we respectfully, we apologize for the oversight and obviously um, the miscommunication for proceeding without a permit. Um, but we hope that um, the commission will uh, understand, you know, where the uh, retailer was coming from. They want to reopen before Labor Day after having been closed for eight weeks. And um, they proceeded. Relevant examples in the cast iron dist uh, Soho district are uh, such uh, 460 Broom Street, 458, 456, 454 on the left. Um, here's some close ups. Uh, we did go back and actually have our paint chips adjust, you know, next to some of these adjacent, um, uh, some of these other properties that have already, um, that exist currently. Um, here's another example of Green Street, 142 Green Street. Um, uh, again, a considerably darker first story. And uh, 113 Prince Street. And, uh, and then some various other uh, examples. 
so we respectfully request that um, that they that the commission uh, deems that we can uh, keep the facade in its new current uh, current uh, condition. I'll go, I'll go back to the existing versus new. Great, thank you very much. All right, commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant? Yes, Commissioner Devonshire, please go ahead. Yeah, Sarah, do we know that the, uh, for example, the uh, ground floor on Green Street is actually had a permit to do that? Yeah, I was actually just wondering myself and going to ask Corey if he had any information on that. The one on Green Street is particularly dark, so I also sort of flagged for me. Corey, do you know the history of any of the examples shown? Um, my understanding is that at least a couple of them are ones that were pre-designation conditions that have been maintained over the years. Um, I, I think we, the commission has approved um, a darker color at the base on occasion when applicants have demonstrated that perhaps that streetscape did so. And we've also referred to a paint study that was done uh, in Soho that demonstrated that some of these buildings were in fact given a dark base in the late uh, 1800s. Uh, but we've also seen the commission um, request that the uh, facades remain one color. Uh, but I, I'm not sure about the particular Green Street example. Okay, other questions? All right, let's take some testimony, see if we have testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you and I'll turn it over to Sonia Gior to take us through the testimony. Thank you. We do have some signups in advance. Um, we will start with Lucy Levine. And Lucy, if you could please unmute your mic and state your name for the record, you'll have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lucy Levine, speaking on behalf of the Historic Districts Council. HDC finds this legalization to be inappropriate. We'd like the facade color to be uniform as before. Please repaint. Thank you. And our next speaker will be John Graham. And John, I'll be promoting you to panelists now. And if you can please unmute your line and state your name for the record, you'll have three minutes to speak. Oh, there you go. Good afternoon, commissioners. John Graham for the Victorian Society in New York. <clears throat> we do not support the retroactive legalization of the ground floor color scheme at 392, 394 West Broadway. The historic cast iron facade would likely originally have been painted a single light color to mimic carved stone. The current black and gold scheme on the ground floor, while trendy, betrays that history and is an inappropriate change with seemingly little cause. The presentation gives numerous examples of neighborhood precedent for this sort of two-tone color scheme, where the street level facade is painted a different, often darker color than the rest of the building. That does not change our feelings that the color scheme, at least of the cast iron elements of the facade, should remain true to the pre-existing and likely historic intent for the building's appearance. Furthermore, we disagree with the with the color scheme based on the principle that this change was done improperly and seemingly with the assumption that legalization could be sought after the fact. The VSNY is amenable to a hybrid solution. The wooden window and door elements of the ground floor facade weren't intended to mimic stone and thus could be left as is, while the cast iron portions are repainted to match the upper floors. However, ideally, the facade would be returned to its pre-existing unified color scheme. The light fixtures, which are modern additions, should also be repainted gray to minimize their obtrusiveness and eliminate the rather glaring gold that they now have. Thank you. Thank you. And we do not have any other speakers signed up in advance. And I do not see any hands raised at this time. So I will note for the record that Manhattan Community Board 2 recommends denial, stating that the dark color of the ground floor facade is not historically appropriate for the building and was carried without approval of the, of the commission. And the Community Board also notes that the applicant uh, did not accurately present these changes as the proposed condition um, 
when it was already the existing condition when they presented to the board. And I'll turn it back to you, Chair Carroll. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to turn back to the applicant and ask if you'd like to respond to the comments we've heard. Um, yes, thank you. I think that, um, yeah, it was obviously miscommunication. We did um, intend to, uh, obviously, we applied for the permit in early June, as we said, uh, as we, I was the one that actually gave the presentations to the community board and um, they, uh, you know, someone on the community board had said it had already been painted. Uh, it was the week after this, um, this opening. Uh, so again, we apologize. Um, the intent was obviously we were trying to do the right thing to apply with the LPC. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, in terms of some of the other situations, the there are quite a few retailers that have done exactly this, and that's what you know this retailer was kind of up against or saw, and that's what they um, they intend you know they expressed desire to do. I, I believe the gold fixture lights, um, if that's a, a big, uh, if that's obviously an issue, um, those can certainly be turned back into um, the color that matches the facade. But they were part of the designated photo, I believe, um, the fixtures themselves, and they match the facade. Okay. Commissioners, do we have any final questions? All right, not seeing any questions. I'm gonna send you all requests to unmute yourselves so that we can close the hearing and begin our discussion. So Commissioner Chen, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. And uh, Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you second that motion? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. So as uh, Corey mentioned, there um, the commission has um, considered applications to paint the base in, of buildings in Soho uh, a different color or different value or tone of a color than the upper floors um, in some instances. We have found that uh, in, in a guide that we use at, for at our, on our uh, staff level reviews, we have found that historically, of course, cast iron buildings were painted a light color mm -hmm. to resemble stone. But in the late 19th century, some of them did start to get darker colors at the base um, and particularly on the, the masonry fronted buildings, but also I think at some of the cast iron fronted buildings. And the applicant has shown some examples, some of which uh, may predate designation and some uh, may have been approved by the commission as we have um, sort of taken both positions that in some cases it's appropriate and in some cases we have not found it appropriate. And that probably depended on the shade of the color that was being proposed at the dark floor, at the ground floor, or um, the particular building and its style and its place within the streetscape. So those are all things we can think about as we review this application. So, um, Commissioner Devonshire, would you like to start this one? Sure. Um, you know, the facade of this building is is to me very reminiscent of the Carey Building, which is a, a remarkable individual landmark, which is quite uniform uh, throughout the front facade. I do not consider this color to be appropriate. I, I certainly don't think that the gold is. Um, Perhaps the gold banding on the columns um, may have existed. I actually, um, early on in my career, I did a, a finishes analysis of a building on Bond Street, which had a, a great amount of gold leaf on it. I presented the report to the owner and they asked me to take out the fact that there was gold leaf <laughs> on their building. <laughs> a, a, a reputable owner's rep, actually. <laughs> um, in any case, um, I don't consider this this particular color or or the value to be appropriate for this building. I, I think this building needs to have a uniform facade. I think they need to go back to the the uh, approved color. Okay, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, this one is, uh, I, I agree that the, uh, the the goal probably is not appropriate, but I, I'll defer to the rest of the commissioner to see how they feel about 
whether they should switch to the lighter color. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Bland? Um, I think the lighter color is the appropriate color and um, the gold is a bit much and probably should be repainted. Um, I think the Victorian Society's point of view about the uh, doors, however, is reasonable. In other words, uh, the cast iron was usually meant, meant to uh, emulate stone and um, and certainly the doors were never meant to emulate stone. So maybe they can stay if that's what they would like to do, keep those painted uh, the dark gray and uh, repaint the, the bottom okay. part of the base. Commissioner Lutfi. I agree that the color should stay. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of a mixed mind about the doors being gray, but I, I actually feel like it's hard to tell in a photograph, but to me, this gray wouldn't be the right gray. So if, if the doors were going to be that color, there is a, there's one um, <clears throat> photo that they showed in it as an example of two tones where it was two tones in gray and the contrast was, you know, much less. And I feel like it would have to be more understated for that to work. So what I'm saying is okay. I'm open to it, but it would have to be not as contrasty. Okay, I understand. And I do think, you know, we're really talking about the cast iron here. I think yeah. the doors, yeah. there's more flexibility and the staff can approve various colors of the doors as well. So Commissioner Gustafson. Yeah, the question is whether we would have approved this uh, color in the first instance, and um, um, I would not have. And the uh, and I think the evidence of uh, what the commission would have approved is in what we actually approved. Um, so, uh, so no, I think this application should be denied. Okay, Commissioner Shamir Barron. I'm in agreement. It should be denied and a lighter color. Okay, Commissioner Chapin. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, just looking at the pictures, you would you would not, I would not have approved uh, changing to this color for the base. This building really looks like it needs to be the same color throughout. So apparently there were a couple of uh, a couple of the uh, lower portion areas were a darker color. Maybe somebody just did that individually. I don't know what 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 caused that, but anyway. Uh, I think we should also investigate this uh, this gold on the pillars and find out, have the staff find out if that does appear to, uh, you know, have been an original feature, in which case I think it would be fine to leave it that way with the, with the same color uh, on the base. And okay. I'm not, I think I wouldn't change, I'd leave the door colored light too, unless there was some, you know, compelling reason to do otherwise. Okay. All right. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a denial of it as presented, and then they can continue to work with the staff on the color of the infill in a way that would meet the rules, and they can do some further investigation on the gold banding as well, and keep that. So um, let me go ahead and make a motion here. In the matter of docket number 22-12079, 392 to 394 West Broadway in the Soho Cast Iron Historic District Extension, an Italianate style store and loft building designed by John H. Whitenack and built in 1872 to 73. This is an application to legalize painting the ground floor facade without landmarks preservation commission permits. And I note that the building style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Soho Cast Iron Historic District Extension. We recommend denial, finding that the existing gray finish at the building's base, which was painted without Landmarks Preservation Commission permits, no longer matches the remainder of the cast iron facade, for which there is no documented history of a two-tone color scheme. That the use of a single color resembling stone masonry, which was the condition prior to the current work, is typically the original paint scheme of full cast iron facades. Um, that the 
gold painted light fixtures call undue attention to themselves and detract from the significant architectural features of the building and that the work has diminished the special architectural and historic character of the building. And um, we will let them, as I said, resolve the paint color at the doors at staff level, and they can also further investigate the gold banding on the columns to determine whether that was a historic condition or not. All right, um, Commissioner Devonshire, would you second that motion? Second, Sarah. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. With eight in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move to the next item. The next item is public hearing item number eight, LPC 22-09472. An application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1170, lot 7502. 2211 Broadway, the Apthorpe Apartments individual landmark, also in the West End Collegiate Historic District Extension. This is an Italian Renaissance revival style apartment building designed by Clinton and Russell and built in 1906 to 08. And the application is to replace stairs. Commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Uh, the staff will be taking you through the presentation. Dina, if you could unmute yourself, I will uh, give you the presentation. Okay, if you can click on your screen, please state your name for the record. You may begin. Good afternoon, commissioners. Dina Posner, preservation staff, presenting this application for 2211 Broadway or the Apthorp Apartments. And the applicant is also here to, um, to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. This building occupies the full block between West 78th Street, West 79th Street, Broadway, and West End Avenue and has areaway walls which wrap around all of its sides, except for the Broadway side. The scope of the application is to replace a modern concrete stair on the north side of the building, which is shown in this red bubble. There are ongoing sidewalk replacement and waterproofing projects at the site, and the modern stairs were removed to properly waterproof the areaway, uh, which will be shown on a later slide. These are the historic and existing condition photos of the building as viewed from the corner of Broadway and West 79th Street. And this close-up comparison shows that the concrete stairs were not original to the building and were likely added when a window was converted to a door to create an additional entrance to the ground floor. However, the concrete stairs were present at the time of designation for the individual landmark. This slide shows that there is some variety of masonry stairs that cross over the areaways throughout the facades. However, on the north facade, there are two similar granite stairs with solid granite cheek walls here and here. The proposal. The proposal is to replace the concrete stairs with a new granite stair matching the granite stairs that are directly adjacent. And this close-up plan shows the concrete stair to be replaced and the proposed stair. The proposed dimensions and details of the stairs are uh, proposed to closely replicate the dimensions and details of the neighboring stairs. This is a section of the concrete stairs and then a section of the proposed granite stairs on a new concrete base. In association with the ongoing waterproofing work, the modern stairs were already removed and these photos show the current condition at the site. And finally on the left is a photo of the stair to be removed. And then on the right is a corresponding photo montage showing the proposed stair. Uh, that concludes the presentation and the applicant is here to answer any questions. Great, thank you, Dana. Commissioners, do we have any questions? All right, I don't see any questions at this time. So we'll see if we have public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to testify on this item, please raise your hand so we can identify you. And I will turn it over to Sonia Gior to take us through the testimony. Thank you. We do have a sign up in advance and that's Sean Corsandi from Landmark West. 
So Sean, I'll be promoting you to panelists now. And if you can please unmute your line and state your name for the record, you'll have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioner Sean Crisandi for Landmark West. The Landmark West Certificate of Appropriateness Committee notes that the Apthorpe has only primary facades, both courtyard and public facing. Although we typically would seek differences to identify later interventions, given the scale of the intervention in relation to the overall landmark, the original architect's intent is arguably unaffected. The materials are appropriate and overall this proposal is an improvement over the existing non-original conditions. This work will allow for a more seamless pedestrian experience along West 79th Street. The Landmark West Certificate of Appropriateness Committee recommends approval of this application. Thank you. Thank you. Do not have any other speakers signed up. I'm just checking to see if there's any hands raised. There don't appear to be. So I will note that Manhattan Community Board 7 recommends approval. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we have supportive testimony. I don't know if there's anything the applicants would like to say before we move into our discussion. Not for the moment. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so commissioners, I think if there are no final questions, we'll move to our discussion. And uh, if you can all unmute yourself. Commissioner Gustafson, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Devonshire, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion on the creation of this new stair. Um, that will match uh, historic stairs found elsewhere on the building. Commissioner Bland, would you start this one? Uh, certainly. Um, this is an improvement on what was there, and what was there was not original. Um, so um, I think it's an, uh, it's an appropriate uh, upgrade. Thank you. Commissioner Lefty? I completely agree. Very appropriate. Commissioner Gustafson? Yeah, they're matching all the historical stairs um, in every way possible. It's just, this is fine, it's appropriate. Commissioner Shamir Barron. Great. Commissioner Chapin. I agree. Great. Commissioner Devonshire. Excellent. Commissioner Chen. It is an improvement. Okay, great. So I think we all agree this is an improvement over the existing non-concrete stairs and it will match uh, historic conditions, historic details. And um, so we all support it. Commissioner Lefty, would you read the motion? Sure. <clears throat> In the matter of docket 22-09-472-2022, <clears throat> Twenty-two Eleven Broadway, the Apthorpe Apartments, individual landmark, West End Collegiate Historic District Extension. An Italian Renaissance Revival style apartment building designed by Clinton and Russell and built in 1906 uh, to 08. The application is to replace stairs. I know that the building style scale materials and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the West End Collegiate Historic District Extension. I recommend approval finding that the work will not eliminate or damage any original architectural features of the building or site, that the proposed stair will replace a simply designed utilitarian stair, which was not a significant later alteration to the building, that the proposed stair at this non-historic entrance will match the historic stairs at equivalent entrances at this facade in terms of material proportions, design and details, thereby helping maintain the unified design in keeping with the character of the building and that the work will support the significant architectural character of this individual landmark and the West End Collegiate Historic District. Thank you. And Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. With eight in favor, none opposed, the motion passes. That's approved. Thank you. And we'll move to the next and final item. Thank you all.
Okay, that is public hearing item number nine, LPC 23-00487, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 2059, lot 47, 346 Convent Avenue in the Hamilton Heights Historic District. This is a neo-French Renaissance style townhouse built in 1886 to 90. The application is to excavate the rear yard. Okay, hey, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Stephen, if you could unmute yourself, I will give you control of the presentation. And if you could just click on your screen and you can advance the slides using your arrow keys or your mouse, please state your name for the record and you may begin. Thank you. Uh, my name is Stephen Wakenshaw from DHD Architecture. Uh, thank you for your time today. Um, Okay, so we are looking at a single family home at 346 Convert Avenue. There are other dockets and landmarks work underway on this currently, uh, windows, facades, things like that. But this application just relates to the uh, excavation in the rear yard to increase the usable space of the yard and to add some green space that doesn't currently exist. Um, the rear yard is not visible at all from Convent Avenue or any street. Um, and you'll see here in the survey, not, does my mouse show up? Sorry, <laughs> it does. Okay, um, you'll see adjacent to us, we have a an empty lot uh, This we about the side of a yard and someone else's yard over here. Keep going. Here are some photos of the existing condition where there is an excavated area way right against the back of the building. And then the rest of the yard is occupied by uh, decking structures all the way up to the property line on every side. Um, Next one, here are some views of the same from the roof of the building, oops, um, to get a better sense of things. This is the empty property to the south of us. This is the uh, empty yard space to the west. And, uh, and over here is the, the third yard. Um, we'll get into the elevations of these yards next in a slide that's easier to see. Oh, here we are. There's, um, this is a, a diagram we were asked to provide sort of illustrating the, the condition of the donut and the elevations of grade and the sort of the, the amount of green space and what's going on here. It's, it's, there's a decent amount of slope across this block. Um, we are here at um, negative two and a half feet. The neighbor to our rear is at zero. So we're, we're two and a half feet down from there. We're level with the vacant lot, but we're a long way above this group of other houses next to us. Um, the proposed excavation is to align with the grade of this grouping of townhouses fronting convent. This is uh, a closer look at that, just to, it's a little hard to see the numbers on the screen. Okay, so here we have the, on the right is the existing grades, uh, color coded for matching grades. So currently the wooden deck area matches the vacant lot. The bottom of our little area way matches our neighbor. Um, and here is the proposed where we are able to add a green area, a planter of retained area on our own lot. And the majority of this matches our neighbor's grade. And in conjunction with this work, we're restoring and replacing all of the storm drainage um, to correct the drainage conditions of this area. Lastly here, the, there is already approved work here at staff level where we have maintained a greater distance from the rear lot line. And the purpose of this application is we want to enlarge the usable space off of the house. Uh, you know, it puts us only to 35 inches off the property line, which is less than the five foot required for the landmarks. Um, and that is it. It's a... Uh, all right, thank you very much. No problem. All right, commissioners, do we have any questions? No. Okay, let's see if we have public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand so we can identify you. And I'll turn it over to Sonia Gior to see if we have any testimony. Thank you. Um, we do not have any signups in advance for this item. And I do not see any hands raised. So I'll note that Manhattan Community Board 9 recommends approval. Okay, thank you. 
All right. So commissioners, if there are no final questions, I think we can move to our discussion. So I'm sending you all requests to unmute yourself. Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Chapin, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed and we'll now begin our discussion. And um, this is an application to excavate the rear yard, um, to, uh, keeping a, a 35 inch, I think he said, uh, area of retained um, land for planting, um, but otherwise lower the grade to align with the other rear yards to the right, the rest of the row. Um, and the, as he showed, there are currently a number of different grade levels within this rear yard and many are paved and some are planted and um, and this would align it with the, the yards to the right. <laughs> okay, and um, with that, we'll begin our discussion. Commissioner Gustafson, would you like to start this one? Um, sure, sure. I, 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 that was not me barking. <laughs> um, uh, the, this property is almost in, in this donut. It's almost landlocked, and um, and all they're doing is matching um, grade with the single property that makes it not landlocked. Um, and uh, there's no risk of damage here. There's an, and they're throwing in the storm drainage, so I I could look for trouble, but I can't find it. Okay, great, thank you. All right, Commissioner Shamir Barron. I'm in agreement. This um, makes sense and is appropriate to drop the level. Okay, Commissioner Chapin. Yeah, I think this is fine. Uh, in this case, you know, requiring five feet or something would be unreasonable. It's such a small little uh, backyard that, you know, I think what they're proposing is just fine. Okay, Commissioner Devonshire. Uh, yeah, I think it's approvable. And uh, obviously my dogs do too. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Chen. Likewise, yeah, especially when they fall in the storm drainage. Great. Commissioner Bland. I thought those dogs were in disapproval, but maybe. <laughs> you know, was no, 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 that was approval. Okay, well, they're with me then because I'm in, I'm in the approvable camp. <laughs> okay, great, Commissioner Lutfi. Yeah, this is appropriate. Great, okay, so again, we're in agreement. Um, so I'll ask Commissioner Gustafson if you'd make the motion. Sure, it will get um, eight commissioners and a dog. Um, <laughs> In the matter of LPC 23004873446 Convent Avenue in the Hamilton Heights Historic District, the application hey. to excavate the rear yard. Um, I note that the building's style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Hamilton Heights Historic District. I recommend approval, finding that the proposed work will not damage or destroy any significant architectural features of the building or site, that this building is located at the end of the block. Therefore, the limited amount of excavation within the rear yard will not alter uniform grade levels within the block or diminish the block's central green space, that the excavation will be done in compliance with Department of Buildings regulations under the supervision of a licensed professional engineer or registered architect to protect the building's facades and the adjacent buildings, and that none of the work will be visible from any public thoroughfares. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you second the motion? Second. All right, Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Devonshire. Aye. Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. With eight in favor, none opposed, the motion passes. All right, so that's approved, thank you. Thank you. All right, and that concludes our public hearing and public meeting today. I wanna to thank everybody who participated and thank the staff for their hard work leading us up to today and for today. And uh, most of all to you commissioners for your always your commitment and dedication to our work. So thank you all. And we will see everybody next week. Thank, thank you, Sarah. You. Take care.